Hi, it's Dr. Kramers, and I want to talk to you briefly about how I do the 5% povidone iodine gargles. Um, it's a time of COVID error, so I'm at work, so I'm just taking off my stuff here. But I have got a gla uh, gloves on, but you don't need it to use gloves to do this. So I've done this for years as a personal treatment for my family. We have six kids, and it's hard to have a virus go through the house. But I want to share it with friends and family and some patients. But the key thing is to make sure that you check with your doctor uh, and you don't have an iodine allergy. So this is povidone iodine. It's located, you can buy it on Amazon or most CVSs. And this is 10%. It usually comes in 10%, but you can dilute it to 5%. And that's effective to treat a lot of bacteria and viruses. And you can go to my blog. This is all written there. It's idoc2020 at blogspot.com. It's an old blog I started when I was at Harvard. And basically, you can just take a look and see how I do it. But I want to just do a quick video. So um, I've done this for years. You want to make sure you're not allergic to iodine. So do this when you're near somebody. Uh, just check it on your skin. Make sure you have no allergic reaction. And if you do the gargling, make sure somebody else is at home or near you in case you have a bad reaction. So I used to do it very precisely with a syringe. So I'd get a sterile syringe. Um, this one I just practiced to do it, make sure everything is normal. And so what I would do is take the 10% iodine, put it in the top. Uh, this is very rare. You get a bacterial infection in the top of a bottle, but I've done this for years with the same bottle. Um, and then I use a syringe. I usually will put about a cc or so in water first. So here's my little, doesn't have to be sterile water. Tap water's fine. I take about a cc. You can do less. I usually do less in the kids, but for myself, I do about a cc. And then I take, which is one milliliter. I can be a teaspoon. It can be one teaspoon to one teaspoon. You're just diluting it 50%. So you're taking 10% in the bottle and gonna make it 5%. So I'm just doing it this way. And then I'll take my one milliliter of the povidone iodine in here, take out the bubbles. Um, and again, I've done this. I'll show you the quick way I also do this, but this is the way I used to do it. And then I would put it in my mouth and gargle it. And I'll show you how I do that in just a second. So the other thing you can do is just take a, a glass cup, put a little bit of water. This is the imprecise way. Just a couple of drops, just a little bit more. And you're just eyeballing it. You really can't uh, intox. You, you can get an increase in your iodine blood level, but it takes a lot. So don't obviously drink this. There was one case report I could find this on my blog of a man who had a decubitus ulcer on his backside and they were cleaning, cleaning, cleaning every day, multiple days and his iodine level went up in his blood, but it didn't cause much problem. So it's very safe as long as you're not allergic. And so then I just put a couple of drops in here, maybe just a little bit, just, you know, shake it around and then I chuck it. No, don't chuck it. Sorry, you gargle it. <laughs> gargle it and then spit it out. So this is pretty disgusting. I've had my kids throw up with this because it's really disgusting. So the goal is to leave it in the back of your throat as long as you can stand it without throwing up. And then I'll talk, show you how I do it in the back with the Q-tip. So you just chuck it in and I'll just gargle it. It's not that bad if it's diluted, but it can be, um, some kids really hate that. So just be aware of that. And um, that's what I do. And then I take a Q-tip. It doesn't have to be a sterile Q-tip, just like this, the same one that you, you know, kind of the, the brand name or generic. And I take it in my 5% dilution. So let's say I have my 5% dilution here, or I have it in here, and I'll just take it. You can use 10%, but I just use 5%. And then I stick it in the back of my nose on both sides. I clean it inside and I try to go back. Um, be very careful with this with kids. I've never done it with my child with this, but I have taken the syringe and shot it up my child's nose while they were sleeping because I was sure they were starting to come down with something. Um, and they choked a little bit and you know woke up, but it, it didn't cause any damage. Um, the reason probably is because you really won't aspirate um, iodine in a bad way. If it were to aspirate, it would really seems from the literature, at least of what I found in my personal experience, which is just me, uh, the iodine is actually an antiviral antibiotic. So it's very safe for lung parenchyma. The cells of the, of the lung are very safe, even being exposed to 5% iodine. Um, you've heard me mention in my videos or in my blog, we use 5% Covidone iodine drops before any eye surgery. We give a little drop of anesthetic because it burns when it hits the eye, but it's very effective to prevent bacteria. And also I've used it in patients with EKC. I've treated now about six patients with EKC, which is epidemic keratoconjunctivitis due to an adenovirus, which is not dissimilar to a coronavirus that can cause devastating consequences if it hits the eye. It can cause uh, potentially even uh, blinding disease, which can lead to a, the need for a corneal transplant. So we take it very seriously and it's very, very infectious. So I've used that as 5% drops to treat patients with EKC and it's worked. Now, I think there's a couple of papers about this and there's been no randomized controlled studies, but as you know, with viruses, we have very few antivirals that work and that's what we're running into with COVID-19. There's been studies 
studies that show that povidone iodine works with SARS-1, which is the swine flu. And now there's two randomized controlled studies to look at COVID-19 and povidone iodine as a preventative measure. Um, my personal theory is that it does work and that it even could be aerosolized in some situations in some that has to be checked. But I've done that even too, where I put a little bit of povidone iodine 5% in kind of a humidifying situation where it kind of gets into the air in, in, in kids' rooms that I think were coming down with something, but that's not been proven. So that's why you have to check with your doctor before you do this. And so I mentioned this, I'm trying to get to the back of the throat and clean it. And my theory is that sometimes the virus will come, this is recommended four times a day or so. And I've, I felt much better after I've done this. And then sometimes in a few days, it'll start to come back. This is a theory. I think something's going on with the virus is mutating or your immune system is no longer attacking all the viruses and it seems to come back. So then you have to be vigilant to do it again. If you start to feel that weird sensation in your throat or you start to get muscle aches or you get a headache. Um, I've used this for the prevent a flu, uh, co uh, colds for years, and I think it's very safe. So I wanted to share that with you and I'll share another video of my whole protocol. And um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps. Bye.